so usual disclaimer, enjoy what you see here, but don't use any of the information on other people. Uh, so this lady's come to us today with a few different problems. The first one, as you can see, some hard skin or callus over this area, which we call the first MPJ. So we count the toes from uh, one to five, starting with one being your big toe and then working outwards from there. So this joint here is a metatarsophalangeal joint. So it's where the metatarsals, which are the bones in your midfoot, meet the phalangeals or the phalanges, which are your toe bones. Um, so it's like the ball of your foot, basically. But we call it the MPJ just to make things a little bit simpler because metatarsophalangeal is a lot to say and write. So as you will see with this lady, she's developing this hard skin over this area. Now hard skin or callus, it's also known, comes due to pressure. Um, and so these areas are clearly getting more pressure than the rest of the foot. So it's quite common for this area to develop uh, to pressure wise to take a little bit more on board because it is a very important joint within your foot through uh, when you're walking. Um, but then the pressure should be a little bit more distributed evenly over the rest of the forefoot, so the rest of those MPJs. Uh, and as you can see, that's not actually happening with this lady. So because of that, she's getting increased pressure uh, and kind of friction movement uh, over this joint, which is causing this excessive buildup of callus. Now, callus is normal. Um, small amounts of callus, callus develops to, to try and protect the area. Um, so small amounts are okay and generally won't cause any discomfort. But when they start to build up, so you can see there's great big hunks of kind of yellow hard skin there. It's very hard and so it's uncomfortable. So we take the majority of that off um, and I can tell when I need to stop. You can tell the colour is now different. So it's more pink. You can see the flesh underneath. But also I feel over the area. Does it feel right? Does it move right? The skin tension changes a lot when you've removed all that hard area. And she's got just a tiny little corn sitting in there, which is what I'm taking out now. So as you will see with this lady, so she's getting overloading of this first MPJ and also on the fifth MPJ, so the, the joint beneath her little toe. So what we could do for this lady, if she wished to, is to look at insoles to try and distribute the pressure a little bit more evenly uh, and help the foot to, to function differently so that you're not getting overloading of these areas. Um, insoles can be really, really helpful for that. It doesn't always stop all callus developing because obviously you are still walking on those feet but it can vastly reduce the speed at which it returns and therefore the comfort periods in between so as you can see i'm just moving that tiny little bit of a corn in there and corns are slightly different makeup to callus they are a type of hard skin but they're um, a bit of a harder type of skin and it, they form in a conical shape with the pointy bit sort of downwards in, into you. Uh, and that little corner I've taken out there, that's what we call the nucleus. So like I was saying before, this lady also has hard skin over her fifth MPJ. And so she's getting excessive areas there. So there's, there's not as much natural loading of the other joints as ideally there should be. But she doesn't find that too much of a problem, so she hasn't opted for insoles and she's quite happy to come for her, her feet regularly men, maintaining. Because as you will see, the biggest bugbear for this lady is the one I will show you shortly. So this is just a very slight amount of hard skin over the area. But of course, she's sat in my chair and I want this lady to feel fab when she goes. So even if it's just a little bit, I'm going to take that off for her, make her feel fantastic. And again, I know I love my 15 blades, but I could choose a bigger blade that would do the job quicker. You never know, maybe I'll try. I probably wouldn't film it though. <laughs> 
Who knows what damage I might inflict with a bigger blade. Now, I just like the 15s. I don't mind taking that bit more time. So as, we said, as we've said before, all blades we use are single use only. So we use, we use them and they get discarded after every patient. We don't sterilise the actual blades themselves, just the handles. Now this is the problem that the lady finds gives her the most grief. And you can see in between there, there's that, that lumpy bit of tissue there. And that is what we call a soft corn. Or an interdigital corn because digits being your toes and inter in between. So this corn causes this lady a lot of pain. For something so small, it can be crippling. So as you can see, I'm taking the harder area. Now these can be, they're called soft corns. They've they've a very similar makeup to your corns that you get underneath. Uh, feet and on the tops of toes which we call hard corns but these softer ones tend to be softer purely because they are in between the toes and so aren't exposed to the air quite the same and so sweat and moisture trap in between the toes and can soggy up the tissue I mean this one clearly is getting a reasonable amount of air because it isn't white and soggy and rubbery like some of them will be um, but they do have a, a different name. We say we call them soft corns or uh, Heloma molly, um, which is Latin. Um, but yeah, so these come again, just the same as normal corns due to pressure. Um, and this is where the toes are being squeezed together. Now, often footwear is the cause of these. Um, sometimes people have kind of foot shapes that, will increase the risk of footwear pressing on them. So if you have a very, you need a very wide, wide toe box, not all shoes allow that width there. As you can see, there's just a tiny little nick there because the tissue doesn't always run in a beautiful uniform manner. And sometimes we do, sorry about the blurring, it's just the camera trying to focus on the wrong bit. Um, yeah, despite our best efforts, we are using very, very sharp tools. And so unfortunately, things like nicks do occur, but we will always make sure that they're OK before you leave us. And usually that will heal up in no time at all. Uh, and the lady will still feel tons better because all that bulk has been removed. So we're now going to move on to the other toe because there's not just the one on the one side. There's the one on the other there. So you can just see on the little toe there, the fifth toe. There is another area. Now we can make like little wedges to go in between the toes, which some people find absolutely helpful. It just helps to, to ease the pressure, to redistribute that pressure a little bit more evenly across a wider section of that, that interdigital section. So we can make various devices. You can have off the shelf ones, uh, like little silicone ones. We can make silicone ones, which are uh, sort of bespoke to you. And we can sort of increase the space uh, between the, those two areas that are squeezing together. But ultimately, footwear is one of the biggest factors in easing things like these soft corns. Now, soft corns can come in between any toes. It's very common in between the 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 little toe and the fourth toe, um, also the first and the second toe, so your big toe and the one next to them, but they can come in between any toes. Um, you don't have to have them on both sides, you can get them on just one side, but there are things that can be done. But always, if you develop one of these, you need to be looking at the footwear you're wearing and which shoes bother you the most when you've got them on. Uh, in between because more often than not it's those ones that are causing the problem slippers can be just as bad but yeah you need to be looking at the the, the the width of the toe box so anything that's pointy kind of at the toe and squeezing those toes together is increasing the pressure in between the toes so that's that lady all nice and done now so I had already done the nails on the other foot but I thought I'd just include this so you can see what I do I know the camera shots aren't brilliant here, but this is kind of like my view, really. Um, and as you'll notice, whenever I'm cutting a, a nail, I kind of put a finger or a digit over the one of my own digits over the top. And what that does is it prevents shrapnel. <laughs> um, 
Podiatrists are very used to shrapnel. Uh, whenever we have a cup of coffee, we tend to have one with a lid on in the room. Um, and we try not to, to speak too much. Uh, if, certainly if you don't do, put your finger over the top because we have all had nails ping off our teeth, our faces, land in our hair, down our fronts. Uh, we've had to, I think every single one of us have had to fish a toenail out of our cleavage for the ladies at some point in our careers um we re it's kind of one of those you just get on with it um we're so used to feet finding debris in your pockets etc isn't unusual and it's just part of the course I'm afraid but we just get on with it so by putting a simple thing as putting your finger over the top just helps to prevent these little shards flying across the room and uh I'm going to just, I know, sorry about the camera angle. I'm just clearing out any little bits of dead skin, any bits of callus that has developed there. Tidying them up. I am very finickety. I do like things to be looking just great. Um, and now I'm going to file over. We use our Diamond Deb files, which are just brilliant. I'm going to file over those areas. It does look like I'm going up and down. I'm not. I'm going in a one direction only. I'm going downwards. So I only come into contact with the toe on the downward stroke. That's much nicer for the patient. Um, it kind of goes through when you go up and down, up and down. So I'm filing off all those rough edges because there's nothing worse than catching on your socks when you're putting them on or in your bed sheets. It's just irritating. So I'd like to make sure everything is nice and smooth and comfortable. So like I say, I haven't just done the one foot. I did do the one foot. I've just not kept that, that, that part of the video going. So we're nearly done now. And I always put a bit of cream on. There's that little area there. I do now dress it. But I always pop a bit of moisturising cream on after every treatment with this. And here are the bits. People like to see the bits. So I have a little debris tray there that catches everything so it's not all over my floor. And that is that for that lady. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please feel free to like and subscribe us and ask any questions in the comments. Bye.